I hear 11. So then, first thing that we're going to look at, we're going to work through component one. Um, the first thing we'll get to is the skeletal system, and we're looking at functions of the skeleton specifically. Now, we'll try and use a screen. It is a bit blurry at times, so just bear with us on that, and you'll be working with your key booklets anyway. Okay. So the first thing that we do, we look at the five functions of the skeleton. As you can see, it supports, protects, gives movement, stores minerals, and produces blood. The way we remember that is an acronym, Stop Pinching Me, Sam Powell. As you can see, current Wigan Warriors player, it should be there for you, fresh in your minds. So, to help you through, support. The first thing your skeleton does, it supports your body. As you can see, the picture at the far side, without your skeleton, you would just be a pile of skin, muscle, organs on the floor. You won't be living very long. Okay? Second bit, it protects. This is a key one for me in sport. I think it's one of the most important. You can see your rib cage is protecting your lungs, your heart, your liver, your stomach. It is a massive thing because without that, if you took a shot to the ribs, anything like that in a game of rugby or football, you know, you're not going to come off well. Likewise, your skull protects your brain. Now, the GCSE term for skull is cranium. It's going to protect your brain. It doesn't protect it fully. You can still get things like concussion, but it's a massive, massive difference. Second bit, movement. Your skeleton provides movement, okay? It allows your muscles and your tendons to attach to the bone and they then pull on these to create movement. Again, without them, you wouldn't be going anywhere. Fourth one, it stores minerals, okay? So your skeletal system stores calcium and iron within the bones themselves uh, and obviously the key components of a balanced diet and a healthy lifestyle. Five, the P stands for produces blood. Now as you can see, the pictures of red blood cells it produces white ones as well, but for the GCSE, you just need to know it produces red blood cells. Massive when we look at the cardiovascular system for transporting oxygen around the body. Moving on, we've then got the location of major bones. Now, as you can see, I'll move to the side for this one. We're going to work our way down. So, it starts off at the cranium, top of the head, okay, of the head itself. Then we move down, we've got the clavicle, which is this bone just across the top of your shoulder. Scapula is at the back just underneath where my hood would be there really. Moving down, we go into the humerus in the arm. So that's the bone between your shoulder and your elbow, okay? Humerus is there. Then we've got the radius and ulna. Now as you can see from the diagram, the radius is the bone running towards the thumb. The ulna is the bone running towards the little finger, all right? Moving on, we've then got the sternum, which is down the middle of the rib cage. Really strong bone that in the body that all the ribs connect to. That's the next bone through really, the ribs around that sternum. Okay. We've then got the vertebral column. Nice and simple. That's your spine. It goes from the bottom here all the way up to the top of your body into your head. Okay. So that's your vertebral column known as the spine but the GCSE terms are what we're using. Okay. Next one you've got the ilium which is like the top of your hip bone here. You can feel it sticking out which is then followed by the pubis bone which is down coming round to the front. At the bottom of the vertebral column is your sacrum, that's like your coccyx, that they're all in one position, they're fused together, they're a separate part to the vertebral column, okay, and that's just at the back there. Moving on, we've got the femur, that's the longest bone in your body from the hip right the way through to the knee, patella, front of the knee, and then you've got your fib fibula and tibula, tibia, tibia is at the front, fibula is at the back, if you feel a bone at the front of your shin, that's going to be the, uh, the tibia. Uh, and obviously you can't really feel the fibula which is at the back of them there. Moving on to our feet and our hands. In our hands we have got the carpals which are in the wrist part as you can see. Metacarpals are basically from the wrist to the knuckles and then your phalanges are from your knuckles to your fingertips. Moving on from that we then look at the feet. You've got tarsals at the bottom of your feet. Moving on to metatarsals which are between basically your, your heel and the start of your toes. And you've got the phalanges, again, same name as the fingers on your hand, they're your toes as well. Okay? They're the key bones that you need to know. Moving on, we look at a synovial joint. A synovial joint is the main joint we've got in, the, in our human body. It's the only joint we look at at GCSE level. As you can see, the capsular ligament is down the outside of that joint. It is keeping that joint in place, okay? The synovial membrane inside, that's a fluid that allows the joint to move past each other. Without that, they'd just be rubbing on each other, as we've seen in lesson, and it doesn't look very good. So that synovial membrane keeps everything moving in that joint, and the capsular ligament keeps that membrane in. 
Uh, you've got the cartilage as well, which is on the edge of the edges of the bone. They form it, so you can see there. This is the elbow joint. You can see on the top of the bottom of the humerus there, cartilage, cartilage on top of the radius and ulna as well. One they might ask you. That's a hinge joint. That one. They might ask you in the exam without them labels on to label the, where the joint is or something like that. You've got to know ulna and radius. Um, you link it in, okay? It's one trick they might put against you. Components of joints then? Well, we've got your ligaments. They attach bone to bone. They keep the joints stable during movements. You know, I've seen a lot of ligament damage when they've just collapsed and people have dislocated knees. So they help stop things like dislocations. Cartilage is the next one. Uh, reduces friction in a joint. It acts as a shock absorber, absorber even. Uh, but there's no blood supply to cartilage. I've injured mine before, was out for 18 months because it took ages for the blood supply to actually heal it and get it back to normal again. The next one is tendons. You need to know that tendons attach muscle to bone. As opposed to ligaments bone to bone, tendons attach muscle to bone. And again, they help transmit power from muscles into your bones. Okay? Last bit of the skeletal system. It's a long topic, this one really, for this video, but the, what your joints actually do. So we can get flexion and extension at a hinge joint. Hinge joint, think about a door, all right? Opens and closes. So open door, closed door, okay? Now, with that, that is, exten uh, sorry, that is flexion, so the joint is smaller, whereas when we then open the joint, that is extension. So if someone said to you flexion muscles, you would naturally bring your arm up. Just remember, that's flexion, okay? Nice and simple, these joints. Ball and socket joints, more versatile joint in the body. Does quite a lot. We've got adduction, so that brings the arm into the body, adds together. We've got abduction, which takes the arm away from the body, all the way up to there if you need it to, okay? There's sideways movements. Remember, if someone's abducted, they are taken away. So from there then, from abduction, we get adduction, bringing it back down. Next one is rotation. I'll try and catch up with this one, but rotation of a joint, I'll do it this way. You're actually turning the joint itself. So the, my shoulder joint's not moving, but my bone inside the joint is as I do that. Likewise, circumduction then, my, my shoulder joint moves this time. Rather than it just being that, my actual joint moves, okay? Available at the shoulder and in your hips as well. It does it the same, so my hips, it'll be going round there, but you can't see. Uh, then we've got flexion extension. Flexion at the shoulder joint looks like this, a ball and socket joint. So front on it's there, it's going forward. And then we've got extension, it's going behind. So flexion at the ball and socket, extension, okay? And that's it for the skeletal system.